everyone. Hey, hey, and welcome to After Hours here at Linda's Electric Quilters. Woo, 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 woo. That was a longer woo woo than I was I expecting. I was it's doing normally an extended. Woo, woo. <laughs> an extended woo woo. Yeah, exactly. With an echo. Exactly. I see. Okay. Yep. Uh, we are super excited to be joining you this evening. Uh, today we're going to be taking a look at the first episode in our traditional block package uh, freehand series. Yes. Uh, where we look at templates um, and rulers and the basic eight stencils and the designs with lines. Basically taking a couple blocks and giving you some freehand ideas, right? Exactly, yeah. It's kind of what we're doing. Um, so if you have any questions, definitely put it in the feed. Mm -hmm. Our staff will be there answering the questions for you. Awesome. Well, let's head over to the machine and check it out. Alrighty. So over here at the machine, um, this is the first block that we're going to be working with. Um, and in this one, I just kind of wanted to break it apart and kind of give you a bunch of different design inspiration on how you can attack this um, with different rulers and templates. So the first upper half I've kind of already completed um, right here. This is where I started with a ruler and then decided, oh, I think I'm good enough without it. Obviously not. So this is what <laughs> not to do. Um, however, you can see that it continues with the line work right here. Um, against the piecing, we'll talk about that down here. We've got some background um, out here in these outer sections, which we'll get to, and then this little um, spider spirograph up here that we'll get to. Um, but right here in the center, uh, I uh, took out the uh, Kirby Square book from the Designs with Lines series. Yeah, well, that's a fun book. And on page 13, um, I really like this block, and we're going to be working with this one today. And I wanted to show you that it was okay to cross piecing lines to put something in. So we're going to be using this curvy square design for this squared off section. I love that idea. So what I we're going to do. I love in the books too how it shows you direction. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, so all the, you know, a lot of the books have that in there where they show you which, how to start. If you get confused, like how to start and how to finish and where you're going, I love that. Yeah, it's a nice kind of a backup yep. if you, you get, get a little confused. Um, and then also come in with a chalk pencil as well. That always helps. Um, so we're going to start here at the upper left-hand corner and work our way through this section. Uh, come in, do a little bit of a heart here, and then continue out and do the heart here, here, and here. I'm going to be using my 10-inch um, arch template, which is really going to help me get these nice curves in. So with your arch template, there's a bunch of different lines in this template. I'll move over here in the blue so you can see it. And this first curve line right here is something I want to work with. That curve line goes all the way across this template. So I can match up this curve line with my upper corners of this white inner block. So I'm going to move this to where that curved line hits both of those corners, kind of like the way we use our basic eight. So we'll match that one, we'll match that one. I can put my machine here at the upper left corner. And it's gonna start right there in the corner, which is super cool. Um, I've got stitch regulated on doing 12 stitches per inch. Uh, and when I stop, I'll be in needle down position. So let me go and pull up my thread real quick. And while he's pulling up this thread, make sure that when you're using rulers that you do use a ruler base. I'm on your machine. No matter what brand you have, you definitely need a ruler base to use rulers. Definitely. Yeah, that, that's something I forgot to mention, so thank you for that. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to start with the needle in the down position. Ruler base is on. Have my arch guide. I've got those points lined up with that nice curve here. And I'm going to have my thumb here on the bottom part of the arch. And that's just going to help it from pushing back when I need to use a little bit of force. So I'm going to hold that. And once I get to the center of this, that's when I'm going to pull this away and do my heart and then come back. You can always stop right there with your needle down, move it away, do your heart and come back as well. So let's go ahead and get moving on this one. So just holding this and all the way in here until we get to that midpoint. I'll stop with the needle down, move my machine away or move my template away, not my machine, my goodness. And then I can start it back up. A little bit of a heart, come back right there, needle down, put my template back, make sure my lines match up where they need to be, like so. Good grip on the template, thumb at the bottom, and then you'll work your way up to your corner. And that'll hit that point. You'll stop, rotate, and do that same theory all the way around the block. So we'll match up our lines on our template, Get everything nice and good, and then make our way into the center. 
come here to that center point, stop with needle down, move the template out of the way, and then we'll get to do a heart sideways. This will be fun. Oh, goodness. <laughs> that was cute. Wonky <laughs> heart. It's all about practice. That's all this is. Getting different ideas that way. Well, and you're using this template, but couldn't you also use the curvy square stencil? Do you could that? definitely use the curvy square stencil. However, having a template with your ruler foot on um, really helps you get that nice smooth curve with that curvy square. Very you have true. to follow chalk Very true. Um, at that point, which it was not bad, but you, could, you, you, know, you can still do that there. Okay, um, so then we're gonna, again, mark our, meet our lines up with our corners, hold our template. At this point, we're gonna hold it back here. Now this is behind the foot now at this point, so you wanna take this a little slow so you're not you know, catching anything. Um, you want a good grip on this template as well when you're doing this. So work your way into that center portion. Move that template away. We get to do an upside down heart now. <laughs> Which is probably a little bit easier than the side heart. Maybe, but I don't know. It's still kind of cute, actually. It's unique. It's a design <laughs> choice. There you go. And you'll just continue working your way around like so. It'll hit your point, and then you'll turn it and do it all over again. Diana, what do you think about this? I love that. I like how mm. you can use that template. I even thought about using it that way before. And how you use the lines to kind of line it up for you. Right. On the white, so that way it was even on every side. Yeah, I was listening to your explanation instead of lining up my lines properly. That was a, there was that. <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay. There we go. And then lining up lines properly. I should have done that the right way. There we go. Now it's going to be a much smoother arc. <laughs> into there just like that Voila. so that's going to do that outer portion um, and then we can come in and do something here in the center i'm going to use my spider web stencil um, which it just has more lines than the basic eight um, but the same idea overall let me pull up my thread real quick and move my machine out of the way and i'm going to lay my spider web stencil on the fabric label side down Label, side, label down. side down and match the four corners. So north, south, east and west to the blue portions right out here. That nice label. I'm going to grab my pounce powder, give it a little bit of a tap. This is just a light brushing through here. Lift up your stencil, gives you some lines to follow. Well, there you go. Yeah, this one's bright. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can always blow some of that dust off um, or use even a brush if you want to, um, to kind of brush off any excess if it's in your way. And you can also, if it bounces on you too much, you can just put some of that best press on there as well. Yeah, definitely. Um, so what I'll do is I'll jump here into the center. And yeah, I don't want to start there. Let's start over here on the left, actually. I want to start right here. So I will start with needle down. And what I'm going to do for this section, actually, let me brush a little of this off so you can see my, my uh, chalk pencil when I draw it out. So I'm just brushing this lightly off using those overall lines. And this is just a normal paint brush here. Just like that. That's nice. Beautiful. Just like so. So what this is going to end up doing is I'll start over here on this left hand side. And I'm going to curve into this. I've got a white pencil here, so it's a little harder for you all to see. But I'm going to curve into this, and then I'm going to come up into the tip, around, curve over, and then up and around and around. So we'll drop down, tip up, up to that point of that heart, and then drop down again and do it all over again. So what we'll do, and this is going to be straight free, you can pull out an arch if you want to and do that to the point, just if you want nice even ones. There's no particular way to hold it at this point. Um, but this can give you nice, even arcs. So we'll hold this there. Come to this point here. Move that out of the way. And then I'm going to come up and make a nice point. Point. And then it just becomes a moving process at that section. Um, so then we're also going to head up here and then up to this section here. So we're going to go up. And I'm going to do it without the template. I'm going to free do this. And we're going to see how this one goes. Here. 
Okay. There we go. Drop down to this section. Make your points. Work your way around, and then we're going to do one full long arc to connect all of them in the center. Oh, cool. Just like that. I love how those lines helped you. Those line up, right? The basic eights? Yeah, I'm so it basic eight. This one's a spider web, just has yeah. more lines, but it's yeah. the same theory yeah. as the basic eight. Um, so then we would uh, tie off our threads at that point, do your ties, and then pull up your thread and trim your bobbin away. So back away, come into the center, single stitch, and then trim your bobbin away. And then with this chalk, um, you're going to either wash it off, uh, brush it off, or depending on the color, it can also be ironed off. The blue can't, the white can. Um, so you could just get a nice brush and really get that moving, and uh, you could get all that chalk away once it uh, gets settled. Um, so that's going to be your inner portion right there. And on the um, outer sections, we're going to look at doing some straight line work. So. What I can do is you have uh, more or less, these are printed blocks, but you have, let's think of this as your piecing. So you've got piecing running this way. So if you use your straight lines and go against the piecing, it won't accidentally fall into the ditch and accidentally disappear um, in this section. So what I'm gonna do is I'll just go ahead and jump over to, let's go to this side. I'm gonna go ahead and take a single stitch, pull up my thread. Like so, a couple single stitches to tie it down. And then we're gonna start with needle down. And I'm gonna grab my four by eight ruler. And we're gonna travel up the ditch for this one first. So we're gonna travel right up this, come down a quarter of an inch and back and back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, all the way as we go. So I'm gonna line up my ruler and this is just a holding technique here. Um, if you want to, to help kind of guide your way, you have extra uh, excess lines on this to kind of line up with the piecing. So we can start this. Again, ruler base is on. And we're just traveling all the way across with this one. Once you get to that corner, I actually move my ruler on this side. And you can jump down. So we're gonna just, without the ruler, stitch down until I get to about a, a hopping foot distance uh, here. And what I'm gonna do is turn my ruler, line that edge of the ruler up with my last stitching line, and then hold it nice and taut and travel back. And that's gonna give you a good quarter inch spacing at that point. So once you get to your ditch here, no ruler needed, just jump over until you get your foot right along that line. Line up the edge of the template with the edge of the stitching you've just done and start working back. That probably makes it easier when you're using a quarter inch, doing a quarter inch because you have a quarter inch foot Right, in there. right, yeah. Now if you <laughs> wanted to do something larger than a quarter inch, you have markings on this four by eight ruler to space it out if you want to do half inch distance, if you want to do an inch distance. Um, but quarter inch distance gives you a nice density um, with this stitching line, and it's a little easier to work with because you have that quarter inch ruler foot on. So you'll just bounce over, move your template, and work your way back and forth all the way through this. Move your template, back, over, move your template. Uh-oh, <laughs> lost my clamp there. That's all right. Jump down, and then since you're going through this, you could bounce all the way through this section and continue stitching all the way through there. Pretty cool. Yeah, it's fun. Um, so with that one, you could continue going around this, and since this would be continuous, you could bounce all the way through here, um, either end down here or up there, and you might have to jump over, and then you continue doing the stitching. That way you could do your straight line quilting all the way around this section. Um, now what I'm going to look at, let's look at doing this little um, section down here. Uh, so bear with me just a moment, let me get camera to move. 
And what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to be using my spiderweb stencil once again. And I'm going to lay it down on top of this section once again. Remember, label side down, and we're going to match the lines with the corners of this. And we're going to do a nice little swirl in here, and we're going to follow every single one of these lines to make that happen. So once I have that planted, I'm going to grab my pounce powder, do a nice brush. This might be a little bit too much again, but we'll see. Oh, that one was good. So then we're going to take our machine right here into the center of this section. And I'm going to take a single stitch and pull up my thread. And once I got my thread pulled up, we're going to do a couple of ties just to tie it down. And this is going to be a wild, basically, spiral, uh, more or less. Uh, you're going up to each of these points here. So we're going to come up to a point and then spiral down and then up to the next point, spiral down and up to the next point. Um, it just it begins to get over a little bit of overlapping, a little overwhelming. Don't let that uh, scare you. Just have fun with this one. So we're going to start the machine up. We come up to here down and then up to the point right next to it and down point over and back to the center every time it begins to kind of give you maybe like a little daisy flower effect I move my threads out of the way over here maybe there they go okay And it's okay if things don't go exactly to that point. Remember, you're the only person that's going to know that chalk was there because it's going to get brushed off and it's gone after that. So if your point's off a little bit, that is okay. We're back there into the center. Can pull up our threads. Pull nice. up our Cute. bobbin. I love that. I can see Turn that design in a big block. Mm -hmm. like even making it larger. Yeah, definitely. Uh, went with this one in this section because of density, uh, because you're doing dense quilting out here and here, just kind of keeping it all a uh, nice flow. But you can do that in all of your little corner sections as well. Um, so you've got your straight line work here, that here, and then in this section, you're going to be doing a little bit of a, um, what's it called? What's the proper word for it? It's like an oyster feather, I think is what they call it. That or a peacock feather? Peacock feather, peacock. that's the one. I don't know where I got oyster feather <laughs> like, from, but it oyster worked. Oyster peacock. Hey, 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 Waterland. I don't know. I don't know. We're <laughs> going to call it an oyster feather now. Um, so what we're going to do, um, starting around here, because this is a continuous one all the way in this background gray part. So you're just going to pull up your thread. And if you piece these uh, six blocks together like I did, make sure you remember if you get to like one of the sides where there's two grays to stop yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Ask me how I know. So what we're going to do is I'm going to start my machine up. And you're going to come in with a little bit of a teardrop and then build off of that. A little bit of a teardrop and build off of that. And you can do this as tight or as open as you want. And be, you know, feel free to drive it around and add a couple of extra builds if you want to. Kind of gives it a little bit of dimension that way. And a little bit of movement. And if you need to go fill in a section, you definitely can. Just hop over, give it a little bit of teardrop, and build right on top of it. If you're trying to make your way out of something, just build onto it. A build, and then jump right over to here, and then make it continuous. You're doing this as a full background. You can work one way if you want to, and then turn back around and work this way. Um, no particular way to do this. You're just building on, creating a cute background pattern for this section. You could definitely increase your stitches per inch if you wanted to do something a little tighter like this. Um, if you don't have a stitch regulator, you could speed up your uh, manual stitching. Makes it a little easier to work in these sections. Bounce over to here, and then you'd be doing this under the gray section. Or the other gray section, I guess they're all gray. But... <laughs> and this one you can get a little, a little larger. You want to keep consistency on that density, um, but you can kind of open it up a little bit larger, and you really get to see the design this way when you get off into the corners here. Now this one here, I'm kind of stuck in this corner, so just build on it. Maybe add a little teardrop in there, 
build over, and work your way. Right here. Got this. Now I'm going to come down a little bit to give a little bit of different uh, flow for this feather. Go off to the side here. What do I end up calling this? An oyster. <laughs> um, so you're just building on this. Changing direction really keeps the eye looking at what's going on at that point. Build onto one of them to continue moving. We'll drop down this way. Add a little build here. Come down here to these sides, put in little tiny ones just to get the space filled up. And then build your way up to the next piece. And you'd be doing this all the way around that section. And you just keep moving, keep moving. I get, I get lost in this one, it's so fun. Just like that. I think I'm a little off camera at that point. Oh, sorry, <laughs> I just, I didn't even pay attention to what was going on with the camera. I was just stitching away. Let me move y'all just a bit. There we go. Nice little almost off kilter, of it, but... it was only off just a tad. There you go. Um, so you can finish off all these little sections. The biggest thing about this one is remember, you're wanting to keep it consistent. I kind of got lost down here in the corner because we want to end up up here to continue moving around. So what you can do, work, again, work on kind of building around it. Build, 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 and just like that. You can build or echo your way anywhere out of something. So you can always build or echo build out or of that. Echo. Build or echo. New t-shirt. Mm -hmm. um, and you can just work onto the next block, or onto the next block, onto the next section. I'm getting tongue twistered today. Now this one had a little bit of give in this one. You also, since they come back and teardrop into each other, you can move through this as you, if you move it nice and slow, and it's just gonna look like it's extra stitching if you need to go back and fill something in that you can't get to. a good tip because most of you would think that you would you'd be stuck but really you're not stuck you just you're not find stuck. another path yeah just based on how it comes in tight like that yeah um so you'd work your way all the way around just like that super cool well let's show them like the the block i know it's not totally completed but it's almost done the idea of what it'll look like and i think you've given them lots of instruction today <laughs> lots of good instruction a lot going on for this one um so this would be your background all the way you'd have your little spirals in each of these four corners this one would be breaking down the center now since we did a lot of dense quilting on the outside here this is kind of a side note you have all this open area right here to work from and then if i wanted to do some little ribbon candy in this background to fill up that section You can go back and forth just like this. When you get here to where that heart is, I wouldn't be against just leaving that nice and open. And then drop down. Because the lines end in a nice curve, it's okay if they don't meet up with the straight line quilting and the block on the outside. Get to that corner and now we're gonna go down. like that. Work your way through this. No particular spacing needed on this one. You do whatever you like. Um, but you could have that uh, kind of way just to dense it up, make it a little bit more tight um, in those sections just like that. Love it. Looks great. Awesome. All right. Well, let's head back over to main stage. Alrighty. So I don't know about y'all, but I really, really liked that. So many different things in that yeah. one block. Now granted, were some of the parts of it the best? 
meh, but, <laughs> <laughs> meh. but I really enjoyed this getting those design ideas and learning that it's okay to be crossing those piecing lines. It's not going to hurt it by any means. You don't have to stay always in that little piece of fabric Exactly. Um, as you're working around through that section. And it's okay to make mistakes too, right? It's okay to enjoy it, make a few mistakes. <laughs> just a couple. It's fine. Don't, I make them too. <laughs> don't get in your head about it. Don't get in your head. It's just, it's practice. Practice won't make your perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it's it's your design. Well, I know that what's 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 who makes the rules on what's perfect. Exactly. That's the thing. Yeah, you know, exactly. who made the rules? Where is the rule book on what's perfect? There is none. And that's what's great about this traditional block package is these are printed pieces. Yes. You have six of them in that section, and you have plenty of time. You can get a couple of these packages yeah. and really work those those uh, muscle techniques. memories through and those techniques. Exactly. So then when you take it to a quilt, you feel much better. You feel a little bit more confident about it yeah. um, when you're going in to do that quilt. Exactly. What's best about this is that you didn't take all the time piecing it and then trying to learn on it. It's already done for you just so you can learn just your technique. Print it right on, slap it with some batting, <laughs> you're good to go. Exactly. <laughs> All right, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.